as long as you know where you're going, you can create this context and then and then the exercises start to start to show you what to do. Good morning. Happy Friday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. Man, a busy Friday, busier than normal. Got a big podcast coming up this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, just a quick housekeeping, um, IFSU, we got some new content that's going up um, talking about programming. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to try to get that up this weekend for you. Um, yesterday's coffee and coaches conference calls might have been top five um, just because we had such a variety of topics. Um, great people as usual, but just total fun. And so today's another segment from that. And this came from, from Timus. And it was actually a topic that we don't talk about too often because we're always talking about bringing people back to early propulsion because we're always worried about trying to capture relative motions and things. But we have to be able to move people through each of these propulsive phases effectively. And one of the transitions is from this middle to uh, late propulsive representation. And if we want to do this effectively and make sure we're getting a good representation in a, like a, a max propulsive foot, we got to make sure that we, we're moving effectively through middle propulsion. And then we have to capture this late propulsive representation um, to allow this full expression of explosive capabilities. And so we got to talk about that. So this is really cool because we broke it down into pieces. Uh, we talked about sacral orientation. We talked about exercise selection and how that might look. So again, this is going to be a really, really good segment for a lot of people. Um, if you would like to participate in a 15 minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com and post your question there. Um, if we want to do the consultation, put 15 minute consultation in the subject line and we'll arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Friday. Uh, podcast will be up on uh, Sunday morning as usual. I will see you guys next week. So I would like to bring it back to biomechanics a little bit. Um, so as, as you were talking about pelvis, so pelvis gets late, early, then you have ER, IR, and then you get ER again, right? right. So if, if we bring this context into split squat, and if we're working with runners. Uh, I'm sorry, what exercise are we doing? You cut out on me, uh, sir. Split squat, split squat. Split squat, yes, sir. Yes. So if, if we are working with the runners who land close to max P and then go to late, Right, so they never get access to early. Would so it hang actually... on, uh -huh. hang on, hang on. They do have access to early. It's just very, very, very brief. They they have to. So um, let me. So that's let me just... there. Yeah. Let, hang on. Let me let me interrupt you for just a second, okay? So so when they land, all right. So the the tibia actually has to bend. So they actually land slightly ahead of their center of gravity. Okay. okay. And that's to create from the ground up, remember we talked about a wave, right? So, so the mm -hmm. wave actually starts to bend the skeleton. So it helps us recoil. And again, you, you get the, you get the, the waveforms that go through the musculature, the waveforms are going through the bones, right? But there's actually bends in the bone that, that, that help us recoil. So I have to land slightly ahead of the center of gravity. So it, it, there is a, a representation of early, but it might be like the world's fastest early kind of a thing, depending okay. on how fast you're running. It's like a top speed sprinter. Mm -hmm. um, it would be like, you probably can't even see it because uh -huh. they land so close to max speed. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure that's clear. Okay. Now, Very good. sorry, I'm sorry about so, that. No, no worries. No worries. Uh, so if we, if we are doing split spot with them, right. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we sort of try to work in that range between late and IR, so that's what they, that's where they produce the force and, and get the speed. Right. Would that make sense to sort of, if it's the lead leg to pull it back. Right. Because then we have that late, Ilium position. So we're orienting the spine. So let's say it's, it's the right leg lead. Right and leg. We're orienting the spine to the right. So we have the ER phase of the right ilium. No? Because I thought that this is IR and hang it's on, double hang on, late. Hang on, uh -huh. hang on, hang on. Uh, stand up. Please. Put right. your right leg in front of the left. Okay. Okay. Which way is your sacrum facing? Okay, if the right foot is in front of the left, it is always facing that direction when there's relative motion present. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. So, if you try to turn the sacrum uh -huh. against the relative mechanics, as you turn the pelvis towards the front, mm -hmm. you just lock the pelvis into one piece. 
Does that make sense? Okay. So if you so if you turn the sacrum forward with a right foot lead, okay, mm -hmm. the pelvis becomes one piece. If I turn the same side, you mean yes? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Which means that as I hit square to the front, it's just like descending in the split squat and then boom, the pelvis becomes one piece. Then if I want the, the sacrum to face right with the right foot forward, I got to tip it forward and up and over on the oblique axis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? And then if you put the weight in the, in the other hand, would that mean that you access IR from that position at the bottom of the squat? Or you still stay in the locked pelvis and you just create more compression? Okay, if you're descending, you're going from an from a ER bias to an IR bias, and then the weight makes it easier for you to get into the IR bias. So you're still going to lose relative mm -hmm. motion, but you're not going to be facing the you're not going to be facing the lead leg unless, like I said, unless you orient. I see. Because, okay. because the minute you hit square to the front, the pelvis is now one piece. Okay. 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 The only way you're going to get it get it up and over is to orient. So, so what would be the sort of optimal strategy to, to work in that range between IR and late for runners in a, in a, in a context of a split squat? What would so be which, the position? Which leg is in late? So let's say it's a right lead leg. Okay, so what if, what, what, what's going on on that backside? Compression? The, a back leg. At the back leg. Um, is the late propulsion? Is that, yeah? Okay. So then we would actually like to work on the back leg. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, or, what, else, what else can I do? What can I do to the lead foot to make it more like late? More like late. Um, From the ground up, what would you do? What's a late foot look like? Elevate the, the forefoot. No. <laughs> What's a, what's a late okay. foot look like? Is the heel on the ground in late? Super, yes, it's no, it's leaving, it's leaving the ground. Okay, is the, is the first metatarsal head down on the ground? Yes. Is the toe in traditional extension? Yes. Could I make a foot look like that? Yes. Yes, I could. So just, just get it up like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then would you, would you have the, the pelvis facing away from the lead leg? And then go it down. Have to the, to, to, it would have yeah. to under those mm -hmm. circumstances, right? But as I descend, mm -hmm. right? And again, we're playing with middle outward. We're not hitting the yeah. end range of late. You understand that? Like yeah, we're not hitting end ranges of late. You want to hit end ranges of late? Try single leg bounds, right? Okay. Going across the ground. So, so again, mm -hmm. it's like, what are you trying? What are you trying to achieve here? Are you? Are we? What context are we trying to represent late propulsion in? Are you just trying to access mm -hmm. it? Or are you trying to train it in a specific context where velocity and force are, are an influence? Well, uh, my intention was to, to sort of access that range between full IR and, and late so they can sort of time things well so they don't have those SI or, or whatever neck problems that they might get if they cannot access those ranges. Uh -huh. So to sort of have a full spectrum of that. Uh, transition that was kind do you know, of the do you, know a, do you know what a sprinter step up is not really so if you step up on a high box okay left foot mm -hmm. and then, you, then you drive a cross connect at the top okay. up, yeah. of the step up and then you drive uh -huh. heel off the ground you immediately uh -huh. go into a late representation does that make sense yes it does yeah yeah, yeah. so that's a nice little way to sort of create that okay, that late okay. i see you I see, see what i'm getting at so from IR straight to late, yeah, and that, that's yeah, that's part. exactly. Yeah, that's so, okay. yeah. Okay. and actually, it it actually goes early, middle, late as you step up, right? Uh -huh. so, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Makes okay. sense. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's yeah. that's helpful. Yeah. Hang on, I'm not done. This is really good. Okay. okay? <laughs> so so think about this. So uh, put the weight in your right hand. Uh huh. Okay. Step up with the left foot. Dynamically go to the end range where you're doing the cross connect with your left elbow to the right knee. Okay. So here's what you just did, all right? You drove, uh, you drove uh, more IR into the the grounded foot yeah. on the step, okay? Yes. So you delayed my ability to go all the way through late because mm -hmm. in late the IR is is waning, right? We're taking away IR as we go to the end of late, right? Yes. 
Okay, so I put the weight in my, my right hand. So now I can actually control how far and how fast I go into late. So if I got somebody that I'm just training from middle to, to late and you wanna sort of slow that down so you can actually capture the late position, put a weight in their right hand, do the cross connect at the end of the step up. And now we have something that's really cool. Once you capture that, take the weight out of their hand and then it becomes a jump off the box. You see it? Yeah, yeah, okay. I see. You see, you, you see yeah. how you, you yeah, like yeah, say, yeah. as long as you know where you're going, you can create this context. And then, and then the exercises start to start to show you what to do. It's like, what do I need? What am I trying to do? Be very, very specific with, with where you want to be. If I'm training middle to late, capture middle to late, do it in a controlled circumstance, use load, use speed that will allow you to capture the context. And then it's like, now I got to take you all the way through late to be explosive. So let's just say that Oh, we're working on acceleration. Yes. Right? So I just gave you the position of acceleration with the, with the cross connect step up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And now I got to train through that. So that becomes, like I said, that becomes your bounds. That becomes the, the step up jumps and things like that. Like that's why you do that stuff. And, and the reason to, to uh, prolong the IR phase, so the max propulsion, so getting the weight to the opposite side, Yes. What benefit would that give? Would that give the sort of the wider option of movements, like wider range of movements in that IR? So or? It, it keeps someone from going too late too soon. Too soon. Okay. Because if so they, they don't skip, go, if they go too yeah. fast, if they go if they go too fast, right? I will create. I again, we talk about the tibia moving really really fast over the foot. It's like I may miss out on on my 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 max P through the foot. Mm -hmm. I might have to use my pelvis orientation to See. create max P. I might have to use my knee to create okay. max P. I might have to use my suboccipital. Yes, there, yes, there. Yes. You see it? Yes. Yeah. So, so, so that sort of makes sure that we have those relative motions in max P, right? And then we can force produce at the sort of optimal. You don't have relative optimal. motions at max P. You want them to get to max P. Okay. Because if I lose relative motion too soon, mm -hmm. I'm orienting to get to max P. You see it? It's like, okay. it's like, here's max P, here's where I'm starting. So there's this space represents relative motion. As I get closer uh -huh. and closer to max P, right? Things lock up, yeah? And then Yeah, it's like, see, it's like here's see. motion, here's no motion at max P because I, I need the biggest force into the ground. I don't yes. want to dissipate that force. So I want to be the most rigid representation I can be. Uh, Prior okay. to that, I need space to get there. But if, if max P is here where there's no motion and I'm starting from here where I have no motion, Yes. Right. I don't have any yes. space to create normal representations of max P. And so I have to create it somewhere else. So this is the orientation to create motion because I don't have time to create motion. I have to tip my pelvis forward or I'll jam my mm -hmm. head forward. Right? Okay. See okay. It? That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Thank, thanks a lot. And okay. that, that prolonged time for, for to, to get to max P, does that create, create more force sort of generation? Would that like create that explosiveness? for the it gives you time. Mm -hmm. It's time to produce force, right? The amount of okay. force, the amount of force to execute is dependent on the context. How much weight do you have mm -hmm. in your hand? How high is the box? Yeah. How fast are you moving? How much do you weigh, okay. right? What are your force producing capabilities? How much pressure can you generate? It's like, that's what determines mm -hmm. force. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Appreciate it.